One near victim of the assassins was Saladin, Sultan of Egypt and Syria. A Sunni Muslim had earned the assassin's wrath by publicly proclaiming that all Muslim heretics would be crucified. The assassins responded in their tried and tested way. Twice though, assassins failed to kill their target. First in 1175, a group of 13 failed to get close to their victim, and the second time in 1176, four assassins only managed to pierce Saladin's cuirass and slash a cheek before they were butchered by the Sultan's bodyguard. By the way, this is part 2 of the Assassin's episode. If you want to watch part 1, check it out right now. Saladin responded emphatically to these attempts by first ravaging the countryside around Masyaf and besieging the castle for a week. Then the campaign was strangely abandoned. An explanation for this turnaround may have been the story that assassins had stolen into Saladin's tent at night. But instead of killing him, they had left a knife under his pillow as a warning of what so easily might have been. It is no surprise then that with their impressive resumes of powerful but distinctly dead victims, the assassins became so feared for their effectiveness that rulers went around continuously wearing chainmail under their extravagant robes. Mongi Khan, the great Khan of the Mongol Empire, had made his younger brother Hulugu was given an army and told to go on campaign and expand the empire in the west. This he did with great success of course, and on the way he defeated the assassins in 1256 by taking their previously thought impregnable castles one by one. The assassins had made the strategic error of carrying out one of their infamous hits on a Mongol commander. In the end, the castles were taken, often helped by parading the captured assassin grandmaster Ruknuddin Kursha in front of the walls, and the sect was repressed. As a final blow, Mongi ordered Ruknuddin to travel to Karakorum, the Mongol capital, for an audience. Then he refused to see him and finally had him executed while traveling on his way home, trampled to death by his guards. This bloodless death was the usual treatment for a ruler who had foolishly ignored the Mongols' initial diplomatic overtures and not simply surrendered before the first catapult had been sprung. Ruknuddin could hardly have cause for complaint having previously dispatched 400 assassins in an unsuccessful bid to murder Mongi Khan. The medieval assassins might have long gone. But the Nizari Ismailis continued as a branch of the Shia Islam, and their leaders came to be represented by the Aga Khans of Iran. Many of the Ismailis' ruined castles can still be seen if you want to discover them. The sect has also gained a whole new level of awareness thanks to the 2007 video game Assassin's Creed and its various sequels, which are loosely based on the Nizari Ismailis. Stay home, stay safe, and thank you for watching.